Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 338. Prepare to embark on a journey with today's most inspiring entrepreneurs. Defy the odds, doubt the doubt, and overcome. Hola, Fire Nation. Don't have time to take a call? eVoice ensures it's routed to your voicemail seamlessly. You can even read it as a text message. Go to eVoice.com, enter the promo code FIRE for your 30-day free trial. That's eVoice.com, promo code FIRE. So listen close. I have a secret for you. Audible is offering free audio content. I know, crazy, right? Get a free audiobook and 30 day trial today by signing up at audiblepodcast.com slash fire. Audiblepodcast.com slash fire. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Howard Brown. Howard, are you prepared to ignite? I am on fire. Yes. <laughs> Howard is the founder and CEO of Ring DNA, a widely recognized platform technology expert and entrepreneur. Ring DNA is a culmination of more than 14 years experience developing applications and serving as an in-demand business consultant. Howard's expertise has helped high-profile B2B companies ranging from Salesforce.com to Sharp revolutionize their marketing efforts. I've given Fire Nation just a little overview, Howard, but take a minute. Tell us about you personally. We want to get to know you and then give us an overview of your business. Well, thanks a lot, John. I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, spend some time with you and your uh, guests here on Entrepreneur on Fire. Uh, I started a, uh, a career, actually, in uh, marriage and family therapy. I was a therapist, so think psychologist, uh, meeting with uh, uh, families, children, people who would share their problems with me one-on-one. And after I, after I spent time and felt how privileged I really was that people would share their experiences with me, I realized that what my mom had told me from the beginning, which was I was a problem solver, that I was in the right, I was on the right path. Trouble is, I realized also that while I enjoyed helping people, I really wanted to help people in a bigger way. And when I started my first online business back in 97, it was essentially to help the millions of Americans out there who were looking for behavioral health services but had no idea where to find them. So I took the basic concept of there are people looking for services and there was this new online channel that you could do things in the anonymity of your own home and combine those two pieces. So the idea of my first company, which was for therapy, had evolved and it actually started as a toll free number and that's where the number four therapy came from. It was 1-800-4-THERAPY. Ah. Going from that basic concept, I decided, of course, well, I'm going to try and raise some money and take this whole concept big. So I went to friends and family, and I raised a million dollars, and we created you had a some web pretty board. good friends. I had some very good <laughs> friends at the time. And uh, it was a great concept. We had something here in California called 1-800-DENTIST, which was the idea of connecting dentists with people who are looking for dental services. So it was real easy to sell the concept that there are all these people looking for help. You don't go to your friends and family asking for a therapist. You really want to do it confidentially, but there's no place to look. So I identified a real problem. I, of course, was a provider, and I recognized that people had trouble finding me and my specialty, so why not take that and, and really grow the business? So we set out, we built a web property, and uh, we did a direct mail piece to about 1,500 therapists nationwide, and uh, we got an unbelievable response. We had 1,500 therapists, or excuse me, we went out to 10,000 therapists. We had 1,500 therapists pay us, and they were paying us $100 a month to be part of the service where they would get referrals. The problem, John, was I had one side of the equation figured out. I knew therapists needed business. I had no idea how to generate business for them. <laughs> So I had a typical marketplace issue, which was we had to essentially address two parts, two audiences. So at the point 
at, at the point we had this group of therapists, I realized that I needed to generate content. And the best way to do that was to go out to this group of therapists and ask them to write content about their practice. And therefore, they would get more referrals. So in a sense, I fell into SEO. Because what I found out was that therapists love to articulate and pontificate on things they know and that people go online searching for information. So essentially, we created a network of sites that had close to 400,000 pages of unique content. And with that, we generated lots and lots of referrals. So that was the first part of the business. But once we were able to grow the traffic from that business – um, we, we started generating roughly 400,000 unique visitors to the web properties. And yeah, it was great. It was really exciting. And we started seeing expansions into hospitals, behavioral health care hospitals, so drug and alcohol treatment centers, eating disorder clinics. And then we got approached by a subsidiary of Merck to do clinical trial recruiting. And the business was growing and growing. And then in 2005, one of my more successful customers, um, CRC Health, um, approached me with Bain Capital, which was a big private equity group, about a national roll-up of the behavioral health care space, and uh, they made me an offer I couldn't refuse. And so in uh, uh, late October 2005, I sold that business to CRC Health, and my job as VP of marketing uh, was to fill 30,000 beds nationwide. And we had hundreds of hospitals, we had salesmen on the ground, we had millions of dollars to market online, and I, of course, had an earnout. so I had to prove where every dollar I spent essentially generated ROI. And the whole idea of tracking, which is something that was near and dear to my heart, I loved solving algorithms. I loved looking at Google algorithms and investigating SEO best practices and doing pay-per-click. But now I was actually responsible and accountable for ROI. And so at that point, the online channel represented about $1.5 million in revenue to CRC. Well, the good news was 28 months later, it represented it, – there, it was about $200 million in revenue. So it grew at a phenomenal pace. And I'll tell you what I learned while I was at that company. One, it helps to be accountable to metrics. Number two, evidence is everything. And so at CRC – it was all about evidence-based medicine. Well, one of the things I realized early on was I had to approach marketing in the same way. So I coined this phrase there called evidence-based marketing with the idea of I could essentially grow my marketing budget if I proved what worked. Well, in order to prove what worked, I had to integrate essentially eight different CRM systems throughout this hospital chain. And I found a company called Salesforce.com back in 2005. And we integrated all these systems into one. And by doing that, I was able to actually see from the point of my marketing spend, whether it was Google AdWords or on the ground marketing, into a web form in CRM, what was working and what wasn't, what was generating the interest. The problem, John, and the problem that I'm solving today with Ring DNA was really born out of that. Because let's face it, if you're looking for help, if you're looking to check into a drug treatment center, an eating disorder clinic, a pain management clinic, you're not going to fill out a web form. You're going to pick up the phone and you're going to talk to somebody. Well, the internet has been an incredible tracking tool, incredible analytics. The problem is that you can follow a ad word or a keyword spend online to a web form, to that person filling out the form, giving them the name and phone number. And when that person becomes a customer, if you're tracking it in a CRM application, you know your ROI on that ad spend all the way to the customer. The problem is the minute someone picks up the phone, guess what? You lose all that tracking. So while we have these sophisticated tools for online tracking, we lose it when someone does the very thing that most businesses want today, which is to pick up the phone and to talk to someone. Unless you're running an e-commerce business like Amazon.com, the phone is still an important part of your business. 
Well, there's so much I can pull out of there, Howard. But one thing that I do want to start with is that it's almost like, in some ways, you invented content marketing without even knowing what content marketing is. Because way back in the black hat SEO days, when people were doing all these tips and tricks to get ranked in Google, you were just creating good content. You were having the different therapists actually create content that was doing great things for you. And Google has just continued to reward that as we've gone through the different Panda updates and Penguin updates as we continue to roll forward and get to the straight content that what we want. And then you continue to move forward and just continue to evolve in the different roles that you played throughout that entire company. I do find that fascinating. And I want you to do this, Howard. We're going to dive way into Ring DNA later on in the interview. But just take about 20 seconds right now and give us the quick elevator pitch about Ring DNA just so Fire Nation knows what they're going to be expecting. Because I got to be honest, when I called you today before I went to your website, I thought I might be talking to a biologist. But then, I went to ringdna.com <laughs> and boom, within one second, you know exactly what Ring DNA does and what they are. So I commend you for that beautiful website interface. And we're going to have that linked up on the show notes page. But Howard, 20 seconds, go. Well, thanks, John. I appreciate the compliment. Ring DNA is all about making our conversations smarter. Because let's face it, while we're all walking around with smartphones, they truly haven't made our conversations any smarter. So with Ring DNA, what we do is we pull all the information from the web, all that big data, so to speak, and we turn it into contextual data or small data and deliver that to the person or person within a company that we want to reach. Love that. And again, we're going to dive way more into that. But before we do, Howard, give us a success quote. You've already inspired us. You've already motivated us. You've already ignited the flame. But share with us a mantra that you live by. You got it, John. I live by the mantra by Abraham Lincoln that someday I will be president. Here is a guy who overcame every obstacle to become president. He essentially lived in a tent and grew to be one of the most powerful men in the world. And while I do not have any aspirations to become powerful in that way, I love the story. I love overcoming objections and obstacles. I love getting there. And and I try and embrace that motto and deliver that in all the work I do. And I try and really teach people that I work with and surround myself with to live by that principle as well. There's a great show that came out a year or two ago. It's called America, the Story of Us. And they kind of zero in on Abraham Lincoln for a little bit during the Civil War days, obviously. And it is crazy just to see that the only accolades that he had going into that presidential election was that he had lost two Senate elections. So he was just somebody that lost over and over again and kept being persistent in overcoming these obstacles. Why? Because he had that deep-seated belief in his mind that someday he would be president. So Howard, I love that. Thank you for sharing that with us. I'm an American histories major as well. So that does ring true with me on a lot of levels. And what I want to do now is let's move forward because you're our spotlighted guest today, Howard, and we want to hear your journey. I want to hear a failure that you had at some point along your journey when you really just fell on your face and you had to pick yourself up and move forward. And Howard, what did you learn from that? One of the biggest failures that stands out for me was when I was studying for my state exam to become licensed. And I really did assert myself. And one of the things that I found out early in school was I didn't have to work that hard to do really well. And that was both a blessing and a curse. Because when I studied really hard for this state exam and I fell on my face, for me, that failure gave me so much because at that moment, I realized that one, I was humbled. I had to tell people I failed because I was telling everybody how hard I was studying. And two, it was okay to fail because the next time around, I studied harder and I did what I needed to do and I succeeded. And quite frankly, until that moment, not to sound arrogant, I didn't have many failures. Things came fairly easy for me and failure really inspired me to do better. Love that. And Howard, let's boil it down for Fire Nation to one clear lesson you had from that experience. Learn from your mistakes and grow and don't look back. Love that because listeners, as entrepreneurs, not only are you going to fail, you need to expect 
and encourage failure because that's going to allow you to get stronger and inspire you to move in different directions and learn from these mistakes that you have to make as entrepreneurs in order to move forward. And Howard, I want to keep moving forward because I'm loving your journey and I'm excited to get to Ring DNA. But before we do, share with us one aha moment that you've had at some point in your journey. Maybe it was for Ring DNA. Maybe it was for something else. But share with us when a light bulb went off in your mind. Take us there with you. Tell us that story. And how'd you turn that moment, Howard, into success? Well, boy, I'll tell you, I I feel like I'm so blessed in that I've had so many aha moments in my career. Um, From the first moment that I discovered the internet, and this uh, was back before the internet was called the internet, there was essentially bulletin boards, I I found something that really matched the way I thought because I, you know, I think they used to diagnose diagnose it ADHD, which was the ability to not concentrate on one thing. What, what I learned was, well, I, I certainly was distracted. I actually was distracted in a really positive way, meaning I can multitask at a hyper level. So in the, in the back, back when, the idea of being distracted really counted against you. In the internet days where you're looking at so much information, you're taking so much in, it really worked for me. And rather than thinking of myself as someone who had a disability, I really looked at, at, at life as somebody who was given uh, a gift. And, and that was one of the most, um, I, I guess, inspiring moments for me was simply realizing that I was in no way hampered, but I was really blessed. So Howard, since that moment that you've discovered the internet, man, you have done some incredible things. You've had some ups. You've definitely had your downs. You've ridden that roller coaster of the entrepreneurial journey. But my question to you is, have you had an I've made it moment? I've had a few I've made it moments as well. I, I think one of the, the biggest moments I ever had was when I was, I was on top of uh, a stage in front of a podium and I was presenting at my first management conference for this big Bain Capital company, CRC, and there was close to a thousand people in the room. And I presented the idea of moving the entire company to a CRM system, a single view of our data, a single view of our customers, um, a single view of our business. And I had faced so much, so many objections leading up to it. And I had to sell the idea that we needed to approach business in this systematic, evidence-based way. And, and people, quite frankly, were not into the idea. We're not into the concept because one, they'd lose control and visibility at the local level. And two, it was something new and people are fearful of something new. And yet when I got on that stage and I presented the concept and I presented the ideas from A to B and, and, or A to Z and they stood up and they applauded and the whole room stood up because they loved the idea of this large healthcare company essentially taking a, 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 a chance, a chance on a technology and a t- chance on a fairly younger person. And um, it, it, it was, it, I get chills even talking about it today. It was incredibly powerful. It was incredibly validating. And, um, you know, I, I hope every entrepreneur listening to the show today has that moment. And I hope they have several of those moments. Well, Howard, I have chills right now. And one thing that I really want to pull out of everything that you said that I think is so valuable is that you faced objections. And the reason that you gave the second one was because people were fearful of change. And entrepreneurs need to realize that when you're doing something extraordinary, when you're doing something cutting edge and new, you are always going to face objections because people are always going to be against change and are going to cower away from change because change is uncomfortable and so many people just love being comfortable. Not specifically entrepreneurs, but the population as a whole. So you really need to realize that, listen, objections are going to come. Embrace them, take them for what they're worth, and continue to drive forward if you really believe in it. Howard did it, and he received a standing ovation from the very people who were voicing some very verbal objections just a short time beforehand. So it's a great takeaway, Howard. Thank you for bringing that up. And one thing that I really love talking about, Howard, is this entrepreneurial journey. Because again, you shared some ups and some downs. You had to overcome objections 
objections and obstacles. Talk to us for just a minute about your philosophy of the entrepreneurial journey. I think you just encapsulated it pretty well, which is mm. you, will f- you will face quite a few obstacles and you certainly will face challenges. And if you have a goal in mind, like Abraham Lincoln did, someday I will be president, and you believe in it in your heart and in your soul, then follow that dream. Follow that dream to its end because there will be opportunities every single day to quit, to stop short. Raising money is difficult. Building products is difficult. Hiring people, firing people. These are all very, very difficult things. And yet, if you stay true to your course, if you stay true to yourself, you can achieve whatever you want. And and again, the difference between, in my mind, an entrepreneur and somebody who isn't is the ability to look at their failures and move forward, to look at the challenges that they face and to put one foot in front of the other. And I'll tell you, during this journey, I've met a lot of people. And, and what you find, what I have found, is the difference between success and failure is movement. And there are people who put one foot in front of another and they walk forward. And there are other people that stand and spin. And people who are standing and spinning tend to think that they're actually moving, but they're moving like a top. They're not going anywhere. And a true entrepreneur will face the hurdles and the challenges and put one foot in front of the other. Wow. I mean, there are so many great insights in that last answer that I'm not even going to pull something out. I'm just going to let Entrepreneur on Fire listeners go back and listen to it a couple times because, man, that is powerful stuff. And Howard, I want to bring this interview to present times right now. Let's talk about Ring DNA and what is really exciting you about this company today. John, I think there are many things that excite me about this business. To begin with, I've, I've assembled an incredible team of people. And for entry, any entrepreneur, that's one thing I recommend is find people you enjoy working with. Find like-minded people. Find people that will challenge you. And the team we've brought together for this particular company is an amazing group of people that I feel inspired to be with each and every single day. That's number one. Number two, it goes back to the challenge. Right now, Ring DNA is about taking this problem of big data. A lot of people talk about how wonderful big data is. We have all this data. The problem is it's overwhelming. Let's face it, between Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and what you're doing online and all of these things about you are sort of floating out there. And enterprises, companies are trying to figure out what to do with the data. Well, Ring DNA takes that data, all of that data, and essentially brings that data in and makes it usable, makes it contextual. And what excites me about it in so many ways, one, yes, you get marketing information. So when somebody comes to a website and they use a particular key term and they search that site, they get provisioned a phone number, they call that phone number, they're calling into the company. Guess what? That company now knows how to service the customer. Because let's face it, we're all using the phones way less today. We're chatting, we're doing SMS, we're texting, we're, we're Facebooking, we're doing all of these things. But when we pick up the phone, that's an important moment. It's an important moment for us because that's a branding experience for the company. It's an important moment for the customer because he wants what he wants and he wants to talk to somebody that can handle or solve his problems. There's nothing more annoying than when you call into a company and you get put on hold and you get put through an IVR system or a voice automated response and then you have to repeat the information you just put in. Please enter that. your – yeah. Please enter your credit card information, and then the person jumps on and asks you for your credit card information. The idea of modernizing the phone system hasn't actually been achieved as of yet. And if you walk into an office, you'll see these old Avaya or Cisco phones. They look like dinosaurs, and yet as businesses, we just assume. We just assume we need them. The trouble is that 
the old telecom companies who have been in place for years and years and years and are making a lot of money at the game have made it really hard for an entrepreneur like me to take on telecom. And what we've done is we've taken a totally new approach to telecom. I think of telephony as the commodity and all of the data and information that exists is the true value to a company. And quite frankly, it's the true value to consumers because we want our problem solved and we want it to happen quickly. And with Ring DNA, we get that information on both sides. The consumer gets the right person. The company gets all the data. And that data includes what marketing information led that consumer to pick up the phone. They get CRM data. What did that person buy from them in the past? They get social data. What is that person talking about on LinkedIn or Twitter? What is that person doing? How is it affecting my brand? Howard, you are the epitome of that entrepreneur that found that pain that exists out there on a huge scale to everybody that is out there that has ever picked up a phone and called a large corporation. Because not only me, every single Fire Nation listener has had that time where they've called this company. Please enter your 16-digit account number. And you scramble around, you find that 16-digit phone number, and you spend that annoying amount of time entering it in. And then you spend your time on hold and somebody gets on and says, oh, can you tell me what your account number is? And then you're having to repeat it to them again. And it's like, where is the actual transition going on here where all this information is being lost and my valuable time is yet again being wasted and treated like it's not worth anything. So I love what you're creating, Howard. We could just go on about it because it's a pain that again, Every single person has faced at some point and will continue to do so until companies like Ring DNA step up and force us into the 21st century away from these dinosaurs that you talked about. And Howard, I want to take a second to thank our sponsors. I've been an Audible member for a while now, so I speak from personal experience when I say that Audible.com offers the best selection of audiobook titles around. With thousands of titles to choose from and a bunch of different genres, you can't go wrong. Regardless of whether you're in the mood for history, autobiographies, thrillers, or just a good laugh, Audible has you covered. When you download an audiobook over at audible.com, you can access it from several different devices, not just one. So you can enjoy your audiobooks on your computer, burn them onto your CD, or upload them to your iPod or other MP3 device for easy time listening wherever you are, anytime. Audible and Entrepreneur on Fire would like to thank you for listening to today's episode by offering you this. Get a free audiobook and 30-day trial today by signing up at audiblepodcast.com slash fire. That's audiblepodcast.com slash fire. Fire Nation, have you ever heard of eVoice? eVoice is a reliable voice service that was built to help you manage all of your voice calls without an extra employee having to be involved. If you don't have time to take a call, eVoice ensures it's routed for you. You can even read your voicemails as a text message. If you're not sold yet, get ready to hear about some amazing features that eVoice has to offer, like call screening and caller ID, conference calling, multiple greeting types, a dial-by-name directory, call recording, Woo! With all these features and more, plus no hardware or software to deal with, means eVoice sets up in minutes, not days or weeks, and without downtime or loss of productivity. If you're interested in checking out eVoice for yourself, go to eVoice.com and enter promo code FIRE for your 30-day free trial. That's eVoice.com, promo code FIRE. And Howard, this is a great segue to my favorite part of the show, which is the lightning rounds. This is where I get to ask you a series of questions and you come back at us Fire Nation style with amazing and mind-blowing answers in one sentence. Sound like a plan? Sounds perfect. I'll give, I'll give it my best. <laughs> what was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? Fear. Fear of doing something that I didn't know how to do. Fear of not knowing what to do. What is the best advice you've ever received? Remember those who helped you on your way up, because if you don't, you'll remember them back on your way back down. (laughs) Love that. Howard, what's one specific action that listeners can take in the next 24 hours to bring them one step closer to their dreams? Ask them what they want to do with their, their own lives, and do they want to spend it doing 
something they enjoy and are passionate about? And if the answer is yes, then set out to do it. Howard, do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with our listeners? I'm madly in love with LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I love I love LinkedIn as a tool for hiring. I love LinkedIn as a tool for networking. I think the more you understand about the people you're talking to, whether it's you today, John, and your profile on LinkedIn yeah. or or my customers' profiles or or business partners, the ability to actually understand who you're talking to, what they've done in their past, and what they're talking about or what articles they're posting is incredible. Well, Fire Nation, you can find the links to this resource and everything we've mentioned in today's episode at eofire.com slash Howard Brown, Howard's own show notes page. Howard, if you could recommend one book for our listeners, what would it be? I would have to say it would be a Business Model Generation by Alex Osterwalder. Uh, Alex essentially crowdsourced a book from 470, I think 470 practitioners from around the world in an attempt to engage entrepreneurs who were ready to abandon old, outdated methods or business models and embrace new models of creating value. And I was, I was very fortunate to be one of those 470 uh, practitioners who got to participate in that book. And it's truly incredible. Fire Nation, if you haven't already, you can get the audio version of this book for free at eofirebook.com. That's eofirebook.com. And Howard, this next question is my favorite, but it's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have, your food and shelter, taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? I would spend all my time researching, really. I would go online. I'd read blogs. I'd listen to podcasts like Entrepreneur on Fire. (laughs) I'd start networking. I'd join online groups on on, on sites like LinkedIn. I'd go to meetups. And I'd try and and find problem solvers like myself, like-minded people. And um, and I'd network. And I and I think I would, you know, I, I'd find people I wanted to spend time with, people who I thought could solve like problems, and I'd go for it. Howard, I have truly enjoyed hearing your journey and where it's culminating right now with Ring DNA. Everything's going to be linked up on the show notes page, and I really encourage Fire Nation to go check that out because, man, what he has done with that interface and where he's taking that company is truly inspiring on so many levels. And Howard, I'd just like to ask you to give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance, share the best way that we can connect with you and your company, and then we'll say goodbye. Well, you certainly could go to ringdna.com and uh, find out anything you want to know about RingDNA, the product. You can also go to uh, Twitter and visit me, at Howard Brown, and um, feel free to pick up the phone. I have uh, my phone number listed on the website, and uh, I would love to hear from each and every one of you. If I could help, that'd be great. Um, that's, that's essentially all I have there. Let's get one parting piece of guidance from you. I would spend time, quite frankly, on, uh, on podcasts like Entrepreneur on Fire because if you can get passionate, if you can get excited, and John, I will tell you, you have made me excited throughout <laughs> this entire interview. If you could get excited about what it is you would like to be doing and if you could be motivated by others who have been successful at doing it, there's no end game. Just keep going. Push forward push through the obstacles and do what it is you think or you would like to do. There is no end game. In Fire Nation, eofire.com, Howard's interview is hanging out in the archives on the podcast tab. Don't miss this. Don't miss the show notes. And Howard, thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise and experience. Fire Nation salutes you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Entrepreneurs, the best action we can take for our businesses is to grow our audiences. After that, anything is possible. Podcasting is an incredible way to grow your audience, establish authority, and an intimate connection with your listeners. What's holding you back? The technical skills? Well, no longer. Podcastersparadise.com changes all that. 
Podcasters Paradise is a community of podcasters exchanging ideas, an ever-growing library of incredible video tutorials for every stage in the podcaster's journey, and private webinars with today's top experts. What are you waiting for? The gate to podcastersparadise.com can be unlocked for one price. Come check us out today. In Fire Nation, last reminder for the episode, go to evoice.com, enter the promo code FIRE. You will not regret it. Thank you so much for joining us today on Entrepreneur on Fire. Head on over to eofire.com for full recaps of every show, our amazing blog articles and resources, and just plain fun. Your entrepreneurial journey awaits, so prepare to ignite. Ignite. 